Thank you, Lois. That was beautiful. So welcome to worship this evening, everybody. <laughs> um, we have mixed it up just a little bit. Sorry about my voice. I know I hope it's not too painful for you to listen to. Um, we're going to have the, the readings, the gospel, and the little sermon at first so that we have the, the whole Holden Evening Prayer in one complete, um, what, what would you call it? Because it's just so beautiful. I didn't want to break it up in the middle with a sermon. So that's how we will do it. Our singer was supposed to be Brady, but he is sick tonight, so he's not singing. So we will do a lot of our own singing, but we also have Morgan and Madeline who have been learning and who will lead us in some of it also. Um, one announcement, the kids have those Dakota Tom sandwiches for sale, $4 each. If you haven't ordered yours, there's an order form in the back or get a hold of one of the confirmation or older kids for that. Any other announcements? No? All right, girls. Jeremiah 29. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. Isaiah 46. Even to your old age I am, and to gray hairs I will carry you. I have made and I will bear, I will carry and will save. Thank you, Brooke. That was Brooke Moling. She, she's also a confirmation student to help. You're so good. So good for that. The gospel lesson for tonight is from Matthew 6, chapter 25. Therefore I tell you, Jesus is speaking, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can any one of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your life? And why do you worry about clothes? See how the flowers of the field grow. They do not labor or spin, yet I tell you, not even Solomon in all of his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you, O oh, you of little faith? So do not worry, saying, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, don't worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. And now we have a skit. Oh man, oh man, oh man. What's the matter? Stop, stop. What's the matter, Alicia? I am in big trouble this time, Jill. Big, big, big trouble. The biggest trouble I see now is you're repeating yourself. Stop, stop, stop. Jeepers, now I'm doing it. What's wrong? I had tryouts for the class play at the same time I had basketball practice, so I skipped, and now I'm on the bench for the next three games. I flunked my history test, even though I stayed up all night last night studying. I'm starving and don't have any lunch money because I lost my debit card, and I told Jared I'd go to the movie with him, because I, but I can't because I'm grounded for three weeks. I can't even call him and explain because my mom took my phone. <laughs> Can I borrow your phone? Wait, that won't even work because I don't know his number. Oh, man. Wait, wait, wait. Let's try to figure this out. What do you think I've been trying to do? And don't be suggesting I pray or something. I know the Bible says God won't give you more than you can handle, but this is seriously more than I can handle, Jill. Stop, stop, stop. First of all, that's not exactly what the Bible says. And second, none of, none of that sounds like anything God gave to you. What? None of that sounds like anything God gave to you. It sounds like those are all things you gave to yourself. What? This is my fault. No. Do you think maybe you're scheduling yourself too tightly, wanting to be in the play and on the basketball team? Do you think you should have at least talked to the coach first? Well, maybe, but... No buts. It's 
Sometimes we can't do everything, and sometimes we can. We have to plan, and when you leave everything to the last minute, you get in trouble. Like staying up all night not and all studying, not a good mood. Why hadn't you studied before? I was busy texting with Jared, I guess, and playing this really cool game, and... Stop. So you chose to text your boyfriend and play a game rather than study? Tell me how you think God gave you this trouble. Is this the reason your mom took your phone? Yeah, and actually it's the reason I'm grounded too. I sort of, uh, I sort of... Yeah. Sort of yelled at her. Oh, <laughs> great decision. But, but hungry now. That's not my fault. I didn't choose to lose my debit card. No, but you probably didn't choose to hang on to it either. What? Listen, Alicia, when we, all, when we get all riled up about stuff, when we find ourselves going too many directions at once, when we don't get enough sleep, we do dumb stuff. God doesn't give us any of that, but you know what? God has promised to walk us through them. Sometimes God is a still, small voice of calm and conscience, and sometimes God is in a friend with a debit card, an A in history, and a phone. So, come on, let's get you some lunch. Well, then we'll go and work and see what we can get straightened out for you. Thanks, Jill, <laughs> and thanks, God. So God won't give you more than you can handle is one of those, another one of those things which we've all said and have all at times gotten comfort from hearing, haven't we? We see it as a promise that we will get somehow the strength to overcome all difficulties, that maybe things won't get worse. And that's a good promise. Jesus himself said, as we just heard in the gospel over and over in many different ways, that we are not to worry about things that our Father knows what we need and that he will care for us. Look at the birds of the air, Jesus said. They do not sow or reap or store away, yet our Heavenly Father feeds them. Yet while we chuckle at Alicia and our skit, we can't all sympathize with her, can't we? Some of us would love to go back to those problems of junior high. However, if we think about it, it probably wasn't much fun for us either, was it? Anxiety, stress, worry, whatever you want to call it, nothing is new. Living is hard, as it has always been. Jesus was born into a world even more unstable and unpredictable than ours. Feeding a family was a full-time job. One summer's drought could mean no food for the winter. Ditto for one dead sheep or goat. Life expectancy was only about 30 years old. So low because of infant and childhood mortality, accidents, and the fact that his country was occupied by a very unfriendly Roman government who loved to find and make grisly examples of even the smallest infraction. The church was no help either, laying demand upon demand from who they taught was a very scary God. Jesus knew that stress, however, was not primarily from externals. Anxiety, as does all sin, comes from the heart. In his day, most worries were probably from actual physical fear, fear of poverty, fear of the Romans, and perhaps the most frustrating for Jesus, fear of God. In our world, it's more psychological. Most of us have never really had to wonder where our next meal was coming from, have we? We live in a country where we are, for the most part, safe. And we know that God, as revealed in Jesus the Savior, is a God who comes to us, who comes for us. Our stress, then, comes primarily, like Alicia's, from the pressure we put on ourselves. Stress makes us vulnerable to all kinds of temptation, and temptation into poor decisions, and poor decisions, all kinds of trouble. And hearing that the God that you're supposed to trust to care for you has given you as much as you can handle, well, it's really not all that helpful, is it? It's confusing and not especially true either. First off, as we talked the last couple of weeks, it's really hard to see a God in the Bible that deliberately throws trouble our way. 
for I know the plans I have for you. We just heard Brooke read. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. That future is lifelong, as God says through Isaiah. Even to your old age I am, and to gray hairs I will carry you. I have made, and I will bear. I will carry, and I will save, God says. And then Jesus, in John 16, in this world, you will have trouble. But take heart, I have overcome the world. In other words, we live in a world where stuff happens, period. God allows it, true, and, well, you'll have to take that up with God when you get there, as well as I will. There are a ton of things that have happened in my lifetime that I think were just plain wrong, including little Reba's death just a few weeks ago. Secondly, most of our stress is due to our response to the situations we find ourselves in, isn't it? We fly around like mad, trying to be everywhere and do everything, and we skip much of the time that which is really important. I ran across this little poem last week that touched my heart. It's entitled Hurry by Marie Hope. We stop at the dry cleaners and the grocery store and the gas station and the green market and hurry up, honey, I say hurry. As she runs along, two or three steps behind me, her blue jacket unzipped and her socks rolled down. Where do I want her to hurry to? To her grave? To mine? Where one day she will stand all grown? Today, when all the errands are finally done, I say to her, Honey, I'm sorry I keep saying hurry. You walk ahead of me. You be mother. And hurry up, she says over her shoulder, looking back at me laughing. Hurry up now, darling, she says. Hurry, 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 taking the house keys from my hands. Alicia's biggest problem was trying to do too many things at one time. To be too many things at one time. She caused her own problems, didn't she? She gave herself more than she could handle. My friends, there is no need to hurry through this life. There is only one thing we need to do as children of God. Love our Father and love each other. So maybe the better way to put this is to say that God will help you handle all that you've been given. That's the real promise, isn't it? Amen. <clears throat> Let's see. And open your Holden Evening Prayer Booklets. Jesus Christ, you are the light of the world. The light no darkness can overcome. Stay with us now, for it is evening, and the day is almost over. Let your light scatter the darkness and shine within your people here. We sing the evening hymn.
May God be with you all. And also with you. Let us sing our thanks to God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. Blessed are you, creator of the universe. From old you have led your people by night and day. May the light of your Christ make our darkness bright. For your word and your presence are the light of our pathways. And you are the light and life of all creation. May our prayers come before you, O God, as incense, and may your presence surround us and fill us, so that in union with all creation, we might sing your praise and your love in our lives. If you flip your sheets over, you will see the confession. Please join me in confessing our faith. God of mercy, you sent Jesus Christ to seek and to save the lost. We confess that we have strayed from you and turned aside from your way. We see ourselves pure when we are stained and great when we are small. We have failed in love, neglected to help others, and ignored your truth. Have mercy on us, O God, and forgive our sin. Return us to paths of righteousness through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. People of God, you are under God's protection. Sheep of his pasture, lambs of his own keeping. Your sins are forgiven. Amen. We continue worship with the offering. <clears throat>
Great and merciful God, source and ground of all goodness and life, give to your people the peace that passes all understanding and the will to live your gospel of mercy and justice through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. God, remember us in your love and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. peace. Thanks be to God. I don't think you're going to be ushered out. <laughs>